Here are five scientific theories everyone must know. Number five, law of universal expansion and the Big Bang. Just when we thought of the universe as infinite and ageless, Hubble's law gave birth to a new theory and so many unanswerable questions. It is a result of observations made by a scientist named Edwin Hubble. When he observed the cosmos, he found out that all the galaxies are redshifted from the Earth, meaning that they are all moving away from each other, which says the universe itself is expanding. This does not mean that we are at the center of the universe as all the galaxies are moving away from all the other galaxies out there in the universe. This was a breakthrough in astronomy as it changed the way on how we look at the universe. If the universe is currently expanding, it was smaller in the past and as we go back in time, the universe gets smaller and smaller. This tells us that the universe had a beginning which comes in the theory of Big Bang. The idea that the universe was suddenly born from a tiny point and expanded to the universe as we know today and maybe will expand forever. In 1964, by accident, the cosmic microwave background or the CMB was discovered which is a light from the time of Big Bang whose wavelength expanded with the expanding universe and now exists in the form of microwaves which is present everywhere in the universe. This CMB is also that static you get when you tune into some random frequency. Instead of hearing nothing, you hear a static noise. Yes, that is the light from the time of Big Bang. All this observational evidence made the Big Bang the accepted theory in science. Recent observations even seem to suggest that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. But how did this Big Bang happen? How can a universe come from nowhere? Is our universe the only one out there? Are there multiverses? At this moment, countless scientists are working to answer all these questions. Number 4. Nature of Light What is light? On one side we have team particle and on the other side it's team wave. The man who knew tons of signs, Isaac Newton proposed that light consists of streams of particles and Christian Huygens proposed that light is a form of wave. Newton says the particle nature is in account with the phenomenon of reflection and refraction of light but Thomas Young including Huygens from the team wave proved that the wave theory of light is not only in account with reflection and refraction but it also explains the phenomenon of interference, diffraction and polarization which is not possible for particle nature. So game over for team particle? No, actually the particle nature of light was right and even the wave nature. Confused? It turns out that light exhibits a dual nature being a particle and wave both at the same time. It was the beginning of quantum mechanics when Albert Einstein came up with a theory of photoelectric effect and proved the existence of light quanta called photons which, like every other quantum particle, had both particle-like and wave-like nature and settled the debate. Number 3. Evolution and Natural Selection All life forms are believed to have evolved from a common ancestor which is a primitive form of cells which mark the origin of species. The nature makes variation in genes from parents to offspring. These changes are random and termed as mutation. After millions of generations due to mutation, the offspring which is born is very different to its distinct ancestors. That's the theory of evolution by Charles Darwin. He explained about how natural selection could cause a land mammal to evolve to whale after many many generations of random changes in genes. His assumptions made modern scientists to think about this beautiful theory which is currently the most proved theory in all of science. Selection is a process of survival of dominant species. If a species is weak and its existence is threatened by other species, its chance of survival is very less and therefore the species gets extinct after few generations. On the other hand, dominant and tough species survive and keep reproducing. It's the real survival of the fittest. Natural selection is a phenomenon where nature selects the toughest individual among several progenies which was simply phrased as Toughest is the survival by Charles Darwin. Number 2. The Uncertainty Principle The most important principle of quantum mechanics is the Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle which was given by scientist named Warner Heisenberg. It states that 
you cannot simultaneously predict the exact position and the exact momentum of a quantum particle like how we predict the position and momentum for any classical object. For classical objects, that is the sizes we generally come across in our daily lives, even they exhibit wave nature as proved by de Broglie from his equation. This wavelength is very very small for classical objects. But if you consider an electron, its wavelength is measurable like every other quantum particle's wavelength. Now for such matter waves, if we consider them as particle, we can find its position but cannot determine its momentum. And if we consider them as a wave, it has momentum but no position so we cannot find its position. Mathematically, we can predict the position and momentum of a particle with uncertainty, written as delta x delta p greater than or equal to h on 4 pi, where p is the momentum m into v and h is the Planck's constant. The uncertainty principle disproves the existence of stable electron orbits in an atom because you cannot predict where the electron will be in the next instance. So the atoms don't look like this. Instead, they most probably look like this. Quantum mechanics plays dice. It's a game of probability. It's mind-blowing to think that at the scales of building blocks of matter, that is the sizes of atoms, it's all a game of probability which we can never predict with 100% certainty. Number 1. The Theory of Relativity The relativity theory explains the nature of three-dimensional space and time as one thing called the space-time. There is special relativity which explains about the objects in motion and general relativity which explains why do we have gravity. First things first, special relativity. Two main principles of this theory. Number one, there is no absolute rest or motion of objects in space. Objects can only move relative to each other and that velocity is called relative velocity. Example, if you are at rest relative to the ground and for an observer moving in forward direction at 5 meters per second relative to the ground, you are moving at 5 meters per second backwards relative to that observer. Terms like earth is at rest, the object is in motion is meaningless. You must use the term relative. Second, the universality of the speed of light. It says that the speed of light is constant for all an accelerated observer of any relative velocity. Which means, for example, if you and an observer who is moving relatively faster than you both measure the speed of light it will always be 299,792,458 meters per second in vacuum no matter how fast the observer is traveling relative to you. Special relativity also predicts that the faster you move through space relative to an observer, the slower time passes for you relative to that observer. Space and time are related. Relativity tells us that we live in a 4D fabric of space-time where matter bends space-time. This is where general relativity enters and this curvature of space-time is gravity. Actually there is no such thing as gravity, it's only the curvature of space-time. But general relativity is tough to be learned in place of Newtonian gravity. So for the basics, we were taught the simple math of the Newtonian gravity. Again, as space and time are related, if the gravity is greater, that is, if the curvature of space-time is greater relative to an observer, Time passes slowly relative to that observer. This is called as time dilation in relativity. Time dilation has been proved by GPS satellites. For GPS satellites to work, the time on the GPS has to be in sync with the time on Earth all the time. But as the GPS satellite revolves at very fast speed relative to the Earth and at less gravity, relativity comes into play and time itself slows down in the satellite. The GPS has to constantly reset the time according to the time on the Earth due to relativity. That surely must have blown your mind if you didn't know about this earlier. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our new channel, Our Based on Knowledge.